Hey y'all, Ramdino here, coming at you again for another Appalachian Trail community news, through hiker update, and trail information. Well, it has been a very busy fall season for me. Fall is the one of my favorite times of the year. Uh, me and Trail Boss have had the opportunity to go out and do some things uh, over the couple couple weekends. So, you know, that's when I usually put these together, and so that's where I have been. So we got a chance to go up to the mountains in uh, North Carolina and see the gorgeous leaves and changing up there and then we hit the beach with uh, Coda and Daisy those are my dogs that sometimes give a cameo appearance here uh, each week and uh, had a good time with them uh, it was a uh, first time I'd ever taken an animal to the beach before so uh, it was definitely an experience these are a little bit of what went on you can let Daisy off Daisy's not gonna do something stupid Angela, the good job she's doing with Daisy. <laughs> Daisy's just all wrapped up. <laughs> God, what a bunch of crap. Guys don't have a clue what that foam is. He thinks it's an animal. He knows it don't taste good though. Uh-oh, Daisy's got the waves. She is, has no clue what's going on with the waves. <laughs> Should have warned me, honey. Now I've got it all in my shoes. Should have warned me the waves are coming in. Now I got water all in my shoes. Good job. Good job. Don't get my sock wet. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, got a broke ankle. Let's go take dogs to the beach. All right, let me get all this thing. Oh, she's gonna be a freaking wreck. <laughs> Daisy! 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 So, yeah, Daisy is a puppy and a doodle dog, and I've learned a valuable lesson. Uh, after having a doodle dog and that is uh, and it took me about uh all of 30 minutes of from the get-go of having it but we continue to learn lessons is that uh their feet are like sponges and fur and they pick up everything so uh you didn't see it here but by the time we got to the to the car to leave the beach uh, on the first day that we got there we had to pick out like 20 had to cut out 20 cuckleburras and if you don't know what that is, you can go and Google it. But here in the South, we know what Cuckleboros is. And uh, out of her hair, fur, whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a mess. Doodle dogs are a mess. Labs, on the other, other side, uh, they are, on the other hand, they are, nothing sticks to them. Uh, so, Coda's a good dog. And uh, uh, love Daisy to death. Not sure we will ever have another doodle dog. But that ain't what you came here to hear about is my... Uh, life with doodle dogs so let's go ahead and talk about what's going on the trail a lot of stuff's even at this time of year going on the trail particularly at this time time of the year so uh, we do have um, some folks out there that are still out there on the trail uh, ultra and hambone they have met them while i was up in massachusetts and they are uh, of course subo and they are through the smokies and probably in getting very close to georgia if they're not already in georgia by now so they should be finishing up any time now uh, so hopefully they'll get back in touch with me and let me know how things are going uh, they had been hiking with flipper and uh, with flippers yard sale and turtle toes and so they after they came out of smokies they're no longer hiking with them anymore for just different pace reasons but in any case uh, not sure where yard sale and turtle, turtle toes are right now but if you're out there and you get this let me know 
Uh, then we had some really good finishes. So we had Patriarch, who had been updating us on a regular basis. He's uh, somebody in Mount Greylock, and that finished the trail on his flip-flop for him. Uh, and so he says that that completes his 2003 through, through hike, and he is ready to stop for a spell. Got a little something else that he's got, he left with us that I'll, uh, I'll bring that up here uh, in just a few minutes. But uh, we also had multi-year section hikers, and they call themselves Mithers. Uh, and that was Hope and Holler. They finished their AT uh, section hike, and they did it over two lashes. So they started out from 1999 to 2023. They hiked from Springer to Carver, and then Carver's Gap, which is uh, there in the Roan Mountain Highlands. And then they did this year the rest of the trail. So they went from Carver's to Katahdin. So congratulations to them. And then Rock and Roll, I met him at Trail Days. So it's always awesome to see folks that I meet at Trail Days and see them finish. And so he finished at the Rattle River Trailhead there in New Hampshire. And then Courtney and Eric, they summoned Katahdin and they may have answered the question about how many Nobos summited Katahdin uh, because they indicated that the ranger told them that they were probably the last ones to finish and their Nobo numbers that they give you there when you uh, check in at the ranger station right before you summit Katahdin, uh, they were number 1,240 and 1,241. So that is quite possibly certainly in the ballpark of how many Nobos successfully completed this year 12,041. Uh, Courtney and her dad, they hiked last year on the end of days uh, hike uh, with the, the group that I put together for the last three years there on the Foothills Trail. So, and, and I've talked to several other folks who have uh, finished this year that hiked last year on the Foothills Trail, the end of days hike with us. And so a lot of folks that go on that hike uh, are, and, and then come back and do a through hike, they are finishing their through hike. So uh, we got a better percentage than those that don't. So that is, that's pretty cool to hear that and to see the folks that uh, came out and then they finished their hike. So talk about a little bit more about the end of days hike uh, in a few minutes that's gonna be doing uh, here in uh, just a short time, like six weeks. BD, she finished her flip flop in the Smokies. So she had to get off due to COVID just to finish up just a very, very few miles, under 100 miles, but she did come back and finish. She lives in the area of the Smokies, so she came back and finished and, uh, and sent us this photo here at Fontana Dam. Uh, and so congratulations to all those folks. If you have finished out there on the trail, whether you've been updating us uh, the whole time or not, uh, or, or at all, then please, uh, we want to celebrate and just uh, celebrate with you this huge accomplishment. So send me in your... Uh, your finished photo and when you finished and where you finished and if you finished at Katahdin what your number was and then what your number was when you started of course if you're a flip-flopper no bow or subo a lot of subos that are still out there we don't have too many folks that are checking in with us so uh, if you're a subo out there on the trail and you see this would love to hear from you uh, hear from you where you are out there on the trail and just give us an update of how things are going out there on the trail for you. 2024 hikers. So we got 2024s coming up. Uh, our first hiker uh, actually already started. Uh, of course, they're going to be getting off, I believe, for the big part of the winter and then getting back on, kind of splitting it up between 2023 and 2024. Uh, but uh, we do have a lot of folks that have signed up for my support list. So we've got somewhere over 40. So if you're out there, one, if you're a 2024 uh, through hiker, then go to my support list, the link's down below, and sign yourself up for that. So that's a place where people can go and put their social media accounts, and then that'll allow uh, the hiker community to go and use that as a resource to find your social media and then keep you pumped up by comments and, and support and whatever they want to do all the way throughout the course of your hike. So link uh, to that uh, is down below to sign yourself up, and the link to that uh, list is down below so folks from the hiker community can go and find that and and uh, go and support people and so I wanted to um, go start highlighting just a group kind of get people to pumped up to, to go to particular sites and particularly those folks that that have their social media a lot of folks that have signed up don't have that link in there yet so if you're a 2024 and you are signed up and don't have your social media link when you signed up please go and do that so that we can uh, track you uh, so we got five stack. He is starting uh, on January 5th. 
he just retired from a big city job in Atlanta. So I know he's excited to see that. So uh, looking forward to what he's got to say. And then Drifter and Blue, they're a couple that have done a lot of sections of the AT. And this year, they're in 2024, they're going to do the whole thing. So go down there. You'll see there, uh, when you get to that list, you'll see there, that's Five Stack and Drifter and Blue. Go and, uh, and give them support. Uh, if you're part of the hiker community, go and sign up, uh, subscribe to their channel or follow them or whatever it is you're going to do there. And let's follow them and let's get them pumped up the whole way. So go check them out and other folks out there as well. Well, some news we got going on, some very sad news. I know, Daisy, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very broken up about it. I know it. You're broken up too. And we're going to, we're going to get through it together, sweetie. We're going to get through it together. Some very bad news and just, okay. <laughs> let me, let me, let me get through this though. Some bad news is, and that is the Overmountain Shelter, the ATC and the National Forest Service and the local uh, trail maintenance club there. Uh, made good on their promise to tear the Overmountain Shelter down. So it had been an icon on the trail since the 70s. Uh, the Overmountain Shelter there had just, um, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous place uh, to, uh, to camp out to, and you can still camp out there, but the shelter's gone. Uh, so uh, that's unfortunate. They made the decision not to put any money into it, not to put any effort into it, even though there were people that wanted to put make GoFundMe pages and, and try to raise money for it. Uh, they made this decision um, and it's been going on. The decision's been in the works for years uh, ever since the, the issue happened with it. And unfortunately, uh, I think there could have been, there, there were efforts made to save it by the hiker community, but they just absolutely didn't want to do it. So they ripped it down. So uh, folks that uh, future hikers, forget it, it's not gonna be there anymore. Uh, you do have, they did leave the privy there. It's one of the more interesting privies because uh, that was one of the privies that you could just uh, watch your folks go to the privy. Uh, so they claim they may do some improvements for that. I don't, it's got such a gorgeous view there. I don't know why you'd wanna, how you could improve upon it. Uh, maybe put a roof over it so you're not getting sopping wet and your TP's not disintegrating as you need to use it. But in any case, um, they said they're going to replace Over Mountain Shelter with a bench. So uh, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, ATC. Looking forward to that bench instead of this uh, gorgeous, gorgeous uh, icon of the trail. But in any case, it's gone. So no point in crying about it because it ain't ever coming back. Let's move on to what else is going on the trail. Well, it seems like the whole section of the trail from uh, the mid-Atlantic states all the way south to Georgia are is on fire. So we got burning bands from Georgia all the way at least up into uh, through Virginia. Uh, and I hadn't checked the rest of it. It may be longer than that. But right now in Virginia, they've got a burn band for uh, all the way through at least December 23rd. Uh, we got a lot of sections of the trail that are closed. So Shenandoah National Park, they have closed from Rockfish Gap to Jar Garmin Gap. So you can't even get on the trail there. That's a uh, number of miles 864 through 873. So that trail is not even accessible. Uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park, they're still open, but they've got a ban. Uh, Nantahala and Pisgah National Forest, uh, they've got a ban uh, outside uh, of, the, um, of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park there. Uh, the AT uh, is closed from I-40 to Max Patch, so that's no boat miles 241 and 255. Uh, and then it's also closed from Petite's Gap Road in Virginia to the James River footbridge. There's a big fire going there, and that's from uh, no boat miles 777 to 787. Uh, and then also Ultra, who is a subo through hiker. Uh, and uh, like I said before, I met her in Hambone in Virginia when I was up there a month or so ago, she indicated that there's a Teleco fire there, uh, which is in uh, just northwest of Franklin, and it's got the trail closed from Nantahala River to Burningtown Gap. There's an ironic name, Burningtown Gap, uh, and that also includes the Wesser Creek Trail, and then the Knob Fire has got it closed from Rock Gap to Winding Stair Gap, uh, just in uh, North Carolina, just as you get into the North Carolina, just south of trail south of Franklin. So a lot of the trail is closed due to fire in there. Uh, and so 
I would encourage you, if you're getting out there on the trail, to go and uh, before you do, you need to go to the uh, ATC website. That doesn't get updated as regularly as it should, so you can also determine what national forest you're going to be hiking in. Go to that national forest website, uh, and those do get regular updates. And then some of the trail is also closed, so not part of the trail, but the approach trail from Amicola Falls State Park uh, to Springer Mountain, uh, that is going to be closed uh, for uh, construction that's going to be going on down there. So that's right there at the visitor center at the Stone Arch, uh, heading up there to Springer. So where it crosses the top of the falls to Shelter 4 uh, is going to be closed. So there's a map here that I'll include there so you can see what's closed. Uh, and that may be an issue for early starters. So uh, keep me updated if you are early starter out there. Keep me updated if that section, when it opens or if you go there. Most people are still going to check in at the visitor center there. Uh, so let me know if that's open or closed as you go to check in. And then uh, the Tennessee, North Carolina, the road up to beauty spot there, which is a gorgeous gorgeous scenic outlook on the trail normally you can drive right to it it's at nubbo mile 355 uh, that road up there is going to be closed and it will not reopen until the spring so that is not a shuttle in point or a bailout point or any place that you're going to be able to get trail magic or anything like that so keep that in mind uh, don't forget that we've also got miss janet's thanksgiving uh, dinner coming up for the the hiker community so it's not only for hikers that are out there on the trail or have hiked but it's just for anybody at large so it is a, uh, a what we call here in the south a covered dish so bring food she's going to have some food there it's going to be november 23rd at laughing heart lodge there in hot springs so here's a qr code that you can uh, take a look at this and scan it and get more information for that um, and uh, that is usually a really neat time for the hiker community. Uh, so uh, check that out if you are looking for a place to be with the hiker community on Thanksgiving. And then uh, we also got, like I said, the end of days hike coming up, and that's coming up the Wednesday after Christmas. So that is December 27th. So we've got a lot of people that are signed up for that. Uh, I've got a Facebook page. There's a link down below for that, so go check that out. Uh, if you are going to be on that hike, please make sure that you've signed up in the event for that. Um, Fresh Ground's going to be there. He's going to be supporting us and feeding us. And so we need to get an idea of how many people are coming so he knows how much food to buy. Uh, so we've already got a lot of folks signing up. That is, a, like I said before, really good primer to get you if you're going to be going in, uh, through hiking in 2024. It's a good uh, chance to go out and see what the trail's like. It, it, you know, it's not as long, of course, and the, the hills are not as uh, long, but they are a lot of really tough hills there, so it's going to kind of get you in the understanding of what you're going to be doing there when you get on the Appalachian Trail. We had several people last year that came out to that and decided that they needed to completely redo their gear and what their expectations were because um, it's in December, so it's cold, just like it is on the AT. Uh, and it's typically wet, just like it is on the AT. So you're wet, cold, you're wet and cold. And so a lot of people came and realized that their equipment was not what they wanted. And so they had the chance to go back and revamp all that. So, uh, and then we've had a lot of people that, like I said before, have just had really good success on the AT. When, and, and they were part of that end of day's hike coming out doing the Foothills Trail. So even if you don't do the end of day's hike, go do the Foothills Trail. It's a good opportunity to test your gear and to see what, and test yourself, see what the AT is going to be like. So I wanted to tell you this story that Patriarch sent in. So, and this just gives you an idea of what the Appalachian Trail mystique and how the trail provides what it's all about. So he was in Salisbury, Connecticut, and he was walking to find a restaurant. And he saw this man that was sitting there taking a photo of a just gorgeous, gorgeous sunset. Uh, and he stopped because he would be walking right in front of him. So he stopped. And when he did, the guy looked at him and said, is that you, Patriarch? And he went, and he recognized who it was. He said, Rambo. And so Rambo was a through hiker as well. And sure enough, they had met on trail in Parisburg at a shelter near Parisburg. And so that was just really neat to see that. Well, it turns out Rainbow was up there uh, in that particular area in Connecticut uh, because they were getting married, he and his wife, Foxtrot, who is also a hiker. They were getting married, 
and and so they were there for their wedding party, their actual wedding, and it just so happened that one of their wedding party did not show up, and so they had an empty place there, and they invited Patriarch to come and be a part of their wedding party. So that is just really, really awesome uh, how that happened. So uh, that's just how the trail provides sometimes, and it's, it's really neat to see that. So thanks for sharing that with us, Patriarch. Well, folks, I hope you'll go check out the end of today's trail. Come out. That's always a good time. And uh, go definitely check out the people down below in that link to, uh, to my, uh, my support list. Go and support those folks. Go and give them an attaboy or atta girl, or atta they, whatever they go by. Give that to them so that keep them pumped up all the way to Katahdin. Folks, that's all I got this week. As always, appreciate you, and we'll see you out here.